ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ರಾಮಾಯ ರಾಮಭದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ವೇಧಸೆ ರಘುನಾಥಾಯ ನಾಥಾಯ ಸೀತಾಯ ಪತಗೆ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಯೋಧ್ಯ ಕಾಂಡ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ಸಾ ಕೈ ಕೇಯಿ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಬೀನ್ ಡಿರೋಗೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಅಬೌಟ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಹರ್ ಮದರ್ ದ ಕ್ವೀನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೇಕಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಎ ರಿವೆಂಜ್ ಆನ್ ದಶರಥ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಅಟರ್ಡ್ ಹೌ ದ ದಶರಥಾಸ್ ಓನ್ ಪ್ರೆಡಿಸಸರ್ ಸಗರ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಬ್ಯಾನಿಶ್ಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಓನ್ ಸನ್ ಎಮ್ ಟಿ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಹೌ ಎವರ್ ದ ಸಿಚುಯೇಷನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಅಸಮಂಜಸ ದ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಗರ ವಾಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾನಿಶ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಓನ್ ಇನ್ಸೇನ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ಎ ಇಲ್ ಟ್ರೀಟರ್ ಹಿ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ಎ problem for his own subjects and that is why he was banished so then suddenly everybody started questioning what mistake rama has done because of which he is sent into the exile because if you send an innocent person who is following the path of virtue if the such a person is sent into the exile it sets a wrong example and it also is also be undoing of the dharma hearing the words of the chief minister siddhartha and those of the king the gentle prince rama humbly made the following reply o king having renounced all pleasures to live on the products of the forest what need have i for the wealth an army or other requisites who will concern himself with the ropes of binding the howda to the elephant when he has parted with the elephant itself o great one such am i what occasion have i for the army in the forest let that all be given to prince bharata please bring me garments of bark i go to pass 14 years in the forest and need but a spade to dig for roots and fruit and creel and basket i wish to start without further delay but however who would be having the mind to go and offer one such garment of the bark to a prince who all these years was wearing wonderful celestial garments made out of the silk however there was kaikeyi who was completely shameless hearing his words kaikeyi rose up and brought the robes of bark and in the mid of the assembly without shame addressed prince rama saying you may put them on shri ramachandra receiving the raiment from kaikeyi discarding his rich apparel put on the dress of bark shri lakshmana also putting off his beautiful robes put on the dress of an ascetic in the presence of his father shri sita dressed in a lovely silken sari seeing the robes of bark proffered her was startled like a doe at the sight of the fowler's snare the prince janaki endowed with excellent qualities received the bark dress in shame and distress worst in the duties of a faithful spouse she addressing her godlike husband her eyes suffused with tears she asked how do the ascetics put the robes of bark because she was all these years wearing the silken sarees and doesn't know how to wear at the robes of a bark like the ascetics living in the forest Shri Sita ignorant of the custom remained confused unskilled in the art of wearing robes of bark putting on end of the vestment round her neck and holding the other in her hand she stood perplexed then Ramachandra chief of the goat approaching the princess fastened the robe of bark over her silken sari all the ladies of the court perceiving rama assisting sita in putting on the dress of bark began to weep and timidly address the illustrious rama o beloved prince 
your father has not granted Sri Sita permission to enter the forest. Do yourself enter the forest in accordance with the king's behest, but let not Janaki go with you. Let our life be fruitful, beholding her face. Let Lakshmana go with you for your protection. But the beautiful Sita is not fitted to dwell in the forest like an ascetic. O Rama, prompted by Dharma, go without delay as you desire, but we entreat you, leave Prince, Princess Sita with us. Shri Rama, knowing that Sita was not willing to stay there in his absence, disregarding the request, helped Sita to don the bark raiment. Shri Vasistha, the king's preceptor, seeing Sita attired in the habit of an ascetic, was displeased and said to Kaikeyi, O destroyer of your dynasty, O evil-minded Kaikeyi, you have deceived the king and now exceed the boons granted to you. You are dead to all good sense. It is not for Princess Sita to enter the forest. Let her rule in the palace, up in the palace of in the place of Rama till he return. The wife is as it were half of her spouse. Therefore, what is his due is hers too. Sri Sita being the half of Sri Rama is in his absence entitled to the throne. Should Sri Sita accompany Rama, then I and all the people of Ayodhya will follow him. Where Rama goes with Sita, there will follow the gods, the people of the kingdom and the citizens of the capital. Yea, even Prince Bharata and Prince Shatrugna, assuming the robes of ascetic, will accompany their elder brother. Then this kingdom abandoned by men, peopled by trees alone, will be governed by you. O oh, yourself, bent on the destruction of your subjects, know well that is no kingdom where Sri Rama is not king, but a forest in which Rama dwells becomes his kingdom. The king unwillingly consenting may bestow the kingdom on Bharata, but Bharata will never accept the crown. Bharata will never accept the crown, nor will he honor you as his mother. As he be the true son of King Dasharatha, the same thing happened at a later date. When Bharata returned, when he came to know that he is entitled to the throne, he immediately, his very first reaction is simple rejection. He told, I will never accept that. And then even later, when he went to bring Rama back to the kingdom, when Rama rejected, even then he was not ready to wear any royal garments. And when Rama forced him, saying that, as I am going into an exile as per the words of our father, you need to govern the kingdom. And then in order to honor the words of Rama, Bharata accepted to govern the kingdom. But not from Ayodhya, not sitting on the throne, he went to Nandi Grama. In the service of Rama, he wore the similar kind of a gar raiment what Rama was wearing, the a garment made of, of the bark. And then he was living there 14 years. Of course, as per the command of Rama, he was governing the state, but was always living like an ascetic waiting for Rama because he wanted to be in the service of Rama. Like Lakshmana was in service of Rama by staying beside him, Bharata and Shatrugna continued to be in service of Rama by staying back in Nandi Grama, little away from Ayodhya, governing the state. This story is exactly similar to how Sita accompanied Rama in service of Rama. Urmila continued to remain back in the palace, taking care of the elders. But everybody is in service of Rama. Alas, in the whole world, who do not 
want to be in the service of Rama, who do not want to be in the service of God. Everybody, even somebody is an atheist in denying the presence of the God, he continue to be in the service of the God. Even if you should die, yet will Prince Bharata, acquainted with the ancient law, refuse to rule the kingdom as long as his elder brother Sri Ramachandra lives. You desiring the advancement of your son Bharata, seeking to make him king, or in reality bringing him to grief, since all will follow Sri Ramachandra, all the whole world will follow Ramachandra, whole world will follow the Bhagavan. O Kaiki, you shall see beasts, snakes, deer, birds and even trees bend before Rama, swayed by his love not to speak of men. O Lady, Remove the dress of bark and let Sita be attired in royal robes. The ascetic's garb ill, Ill befits her. The Guru Vasista forbade Sita to don the robe of bark and said to Queen, O daughter of King Kekaya, you have demanded the exile of Rama alone. Let Sita be clad in royal robes when accompanying Rama. The boon exacted by you did not imply the exile of Sri Sita. Therefore, let the princess, beautifully arrayed and adorned, enter the forest in a royal chariot. Despite the instruction of the resplendent sage, chief among the Brahmins and the king's preceptor, Sri Sita, not relinquishing the ascetic's dress, desired to enter the forest attired like her lord. Thus ended chapter 37 of Ayodhya Kanda in Ramayana. We see the great principles of Sita that even though Vasista and later even Dasharatha and everybody was telling Sita should go in the wearing silken attire, wearing the celestial royal clothes Still, Sita decided to go with Rama with a similar kind of a cloth what her husband was wearing. She is the form of Mahalakshmi. A daughter-in-law in a family is equal to Mahalakshmi in that family. Who would like to force her to live like an ascetic? It's only fools who do that. Namaste Sharada Devi Kashmira Puramasini Tvamaham Prarthaye Nityam Vidya Dhananchadehime. Goodbye.